one of my viewers said that I should do a reaction video of Martin Johnson's best off-grid battery bank video. He posted it yesterday. And I have nothing against this guy or his YouTube channel or anything, but we're gonna watch the video together and see if we can find anything bad. So let's get started. It's time to finally upgrade our off-grid battery system to something much better. Right here, kind of figured out how we're gonna wire them together. Eight, nine, ten. Ten Battleborns. How much does that cost? This thing is $2,149. You can get that same capacity right now for $459 on Amazon with EcoWorthy. So he has $20,000 worth of batteries. He could easily just spend $5,000. That's crazy. All right, let's continue. Sorry. That's ridiculous amounts of money for what you're getting. And they're arranged like this. This is positive. This is negative. And that way we can tie them together. We're doing a 48 volt system. 48 How volt? 48 volt with 12 volt batteries? That's not good. They're all basically the same voltage. According to Battleborn, they all need to be within one tenth of a volt, so. No, 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 you do not want to do that. You don't want to use the voltage to determine the state of charge before you series connect them. If you are going to series connect batteries, cells, or anything, you want to charge them all up to 100% and then put them into series. The voltage will be relatively the same, so you can't just measure them and connect them. You need to charge them up to 100% and then series or or parallel connect them. And we need to tie these two together. We're gonna use this right here. This is bar stock aluminum. Uh-oh, uh-oh, aluminum. In large systems, you connect 48 volt batteries together with the properly sized bus bar, and it should be copper. Something like this. Make sure that the terminals work with your lugs and it can handle the current for your battery bank. This one can handle 600 amps, which is pretty good for a large bank. That's gonna be a really clean setup here, man. Clean setup, <laughs> clean setup. Having 12 volt batteries in series is gonna be clean. I wonder if he calculated the cross-sectional area of this aluminum and if it could actually work for this size battery. These are pretty big batteries. You wanna use large cables or large bus bars. This is my vice, it's my fancy vice. Check this out. So we take our thing here, put it in there. There we go. Our vice, take our flux for the flux capacitor. Put it on there. We're gonna take our solder and instead of just like putting it in there, we're gonna cut little pieces off. It takes like, I don't know, 12 or so probably. And then when we heat it up, they'll just melt in there. Then it'll just make it go a little bit faster. Probably, we're gonna find out here. Whoa, 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 what is he doing? He is soldering the lugs? What? No way. Thing here, put it in there. There we go. Oh my Our god, my soul is flux, dying right now. <laughs> what? No. Don't do instead it. Instead of just like putting it in there, we're going to cut little pieces off. It takes like, I don't know, 12 or so probably. Who probably. in the world told him to do this? This is ridiculous. No, you do not use soldering for large lugs. You want to have a cold weld. And we do that with a crimper. These lugs are designed to be crimped. Copper on copper with nothing in between. And then you cover it with heat shrink. You do not want to solder large lugs like this. Pull down too much. All right, here we go. Here we go, man. That ain't bad, huh? Yeah. That's yeah. horrible. That is bad. No. Let's see if we can't solder this one on. He's putting it in his mouth. Why would you do that? That's so disgusting. Oh. So you might be wondering what size wire this is. This is four gauge wire. Yeah, four using... gauge wire? What? With 280 amp batteries? Oh, these are 270 amp hour. Really? For $2,400? Oh, this is the heated version. That's so ridiculously overpriced, my goodness. I don't see anywhere on here how much current this battery can provide. So yeah, four gauge is not what you want to be connecting 280 amp hour batteries with. Even if you have parallel strings, that's especially dangerous because all those strings could dump current into that little four gauge wire. That's not okay. You should use four aught or two aught and then have overcurrent protection for each individual string. Four gauge here, this can handle 70 amps. The whole thing is 200 amps, all right, 48 volts. 
is how much we can put into it and or take out of it at any one time because of the equipment that we have. That's why we're using number four to connect them together. So that'll be 70 amps per bank that we can take off of them safely. So 200 divided by three, 70 should be fine. Together. Oh no, not fine. You don't want four gauge conductors for that large of a battery. That is ridiculous. The overcurrent protection of that BMS is gonna be rated to a certain spec. And I'm guessing it's a few hundred amps because of the large size. Can put into this is it. not how you design a system. You think about the overcurrent protection, how you can safely trip it, and what conductor you need for that. He's working backwards from the load and I don't know where he came up with that. That is crazy. But we don't have to try to add it later. Here we go. Cable is made, my friends. Look at that. Beautifully soldered. Should have a nice solid connection. And No, it's not a solid connection. <laughs> that is horrible. Why would you do that? If these wires overheat, you could pull that wire out. And it's an undersized cable connected to large batteries. This is actually a safety issue. This is actually bad right here. here. Uh-oh, what is he doing? He's running the bus bars next to these cables. He has a positive one right next to a negative. Oh, this is just hurting my soul. And they're soldered if they pull out and touch a bus bar. There's like a million things wrong right here. Saturday night, I got this thing set the way that I want to install it out in the solar shed. Why is he doing this with these batteries in his garage? You want to set up the batteries first because they're heavy and then you wire them up. Why would you wire them up like this? And the Battleborn website doesn't show how much it weighs. It shows the dimensions but it doesn't have a weight? Why? Gosh, you guys need to update this. Okay, we've got one battery coming down from there, so it's in parallel. And then this positive and this positive, they come all the way over to here. Now we've got this two positives and this one right here coming off of this battery. And we've got these two negatives coming off of this battery. And this is gonna be our main battery wire here. And then this positive and this positive, they come all the way. Parallel strings are the most dangerous thing in a system, especially with batteries. If one of the string fails, all the other strings can dump current into the faulty string. It is very dangerous. You cannot connect them like this with small conductors. You need large conductors and you need overcurrent protection for each string. This is not how you do it. What you want to do instead is buy a 48 volt battery with a built-in DC rated circuit breaker in each pack. So all you have to do is connect that battery battery to a bus bar and you're done and it's safe. This is not how you do it. I didn't know someone could mess up so many wet things. This is crazy. I should do more of these videos. This is wild. Sir, I haven't put it together yet. Because... <laughs> I literally feel sick from watching this. Like looking at it just hurts me. My stomach actually hurts. This is crazy. I haven't put it together yet because I don't know exactly how long I want. I want to get these set in place in the shed and then we'll measure and cut and solder the big wire, right? That's um, two watt wire that we're using off of this bank. That's, um... He's gonna solder the big wire, <laughs> why? What are you doing? Oh my gosh. <sighs> Look at how close that thing is to coming off, but I cannot get it. Wow. Oh no, he galled the threads. It's stainless steel hardware. It is a cold weld. Those metals are sharing electrons and they are now one. The only way to remove this is to chop it off or drill it out or use one of these. This is my favorite. This one's made for cast iron thick metal and I can chop stainless steel bolts off in seconds because you're not gonna be loosening this up. This is one piece of metal now. This guy's back must be killing him. He's lifting each and every single one in here. First thing we're gonna do is take our bars and just make sure that there's no oxidation on them, that they're good and clean and ready to connect. So we're just using some really fine sandpaper. It's like 400 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna go ahead and put he cares so much about things that do not matter and doesn't care at all about things that absolutely do matter, I've noticed. Check our voltage now just for fun, we should be. 50 some odd volts. He has the main terminals with those four gauge wires next to a wooden wall? Why would you do that? I think he should rebuild this system. I, if you're watching right now, take this thing apart. This is not safe. You need to rebuild this. Mm, 53.2, 53.2, 53.2. It's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Every single one of them, 
the same. If you are gonna do it this way, you need to charge up each pack individually to 100%. Do not use the voltage. The voltage is not an accurate way to assess the state of charge, especially when the batteries come from a factory. You wanna charge them all up to 100%, whether you series or parallel connect them. Do not just test the voltage and say, hey, it's within this. No, that is wrong. Charge them up to 100%, then ignore the voltage. Let the charger do its job, hit over voltage protection, and then it will disconnect, and then you connect them all together. Do not do it like this. Six months later, guys. Oh, look at that, man. That is looking sharp. Everything is connected up. Comes up here. Into all of the... Oh, look at all these other wires. Everything's just a rat's nest. Come on. I do some pretty bad work sometimes, but not this bad. So this will be fine until something's wrong, and then it will not be fine. So this is not appropriate. Even though he's saying, oh, six months, everything's good. This is not good. More power. This battery system up here has around 19,200 watt hours of power in it. But this system down here has 38,880-ish watt hours of power in it. So we have- Watt hours is not power. It is energy. It is storage. Power is an instantaneous measurement like watts. You saw the title of the video. I call these things the best. Why? Because ha what? I that Battleborn batteries are the gold standard for off-grid batteries and for building off-grid <laughs> battery banks and systems. We have had absolutely no- What? Because I truly believe that Battleborn batteries are the gold standard. Look at the competition. Open up a Ruxu. Or look at the hardware in a Roypal or an Epoch. This is not the best or the gold standard. I don't understand. And nothing against Battleborn. They used to have the cheapest battery around and they had the best battery for a while. But now there's like a hundred other batteries that are better and cheaper. So I don't understand this. For years without a problem. He like blinked in a weird way that I feel like he was lying. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the guy. Maybe it's just a fluke. Maybe he was thinking of something else, but that seemed fishy. Buy cheap, buy twice. That applies to tools. That applies to right solar equipment like that up there. <laughs> there is better stuff for cheaper. Better with T-class fuses, with multiple temperature sensors, with UL listings at the pack level so you can actually install it with the grid with a hybrid inverter. This is not the gold standard. Absolutely not. This is $20,000 worth of batteries that you can get for five grand with better build quality. Look at the new eco-worthy server rack batteries and those are almost UL listed at the pack level. All right, with communication and everything else. These batteries different and better than these batteries up here. Well, besides the fact that they're bigger, right? These are smart batteries and they all kind of communicate together. <laughs> this is the hub right here. This of each individual battery, we can see the status of one bank and the status of the whole thing as one system all together. And look at that, they're out of balance in the screenshot. If these are all serious parallel, they should be at the same state of charge. And after six months, they are imbalanced. This is not what you want. That's not very smart to me. Look at that, it shows it. <laughs> oh my God. And I believe that they will work flawlessly for you. Something that you don't have to do in a video is say that something is good or bad. When I do reviews and I find something that's horrible, I zoom the camera in and I show you and I tell you. I don't need to have an opinion on things. I just need to show you. That's what a video is meant to do. This guy going on and on saying, this is the best. This is a gold standard. It, just, it makes me sick to my stomach. Like there's, it's completely unnecessary. And if something is horrible, then you link something that's better down below. It's a win-win. You don't have to side with any of these brands. I don't understand why these YouTubers do this. Especially after you have a screenshot showing they're imbalanced. Like what the heck, man? Come on and look at the market. Just go on Amazon. Just scroll for five minutes and then use your eyeballs to look at the screen and think for two seconds. It's really not that hard.
Battleborn is the sponsor of this video. Okay, there we go. He said it's the sponsor. I didn't see that it was labeled in the beginning. I need to actually check that real quick because every time you make a video, it should show that it's sponsored material in the beginning. There's an option for it in FTC disclosure wise. You're supposed to say that. And in my videos, even if I'm not doing sponsored content, I call everything sponsored just so I don't get into trouble. Don't make recommendations. Just let people decide on their own. They don't need your help. You need to educate them and then they can decide on their own and everything else that battleborn has there on their website i'm gonna cruise inside i'm gonna make some coffee and uh enjoy the rest of the day i'm not gonna enjoy the rest of my day after watching that <laughs> oh my gosh i couldn't sleep at night if i had this in a shed next to my house that video took a toll on my health i feel stressed and i feel sick i i don't know if i can do many more reaction videos i like the like everyday dave and all the other solar channels usually know what they're doing but that was just that's not what you want to do. I'm sorry, you guys. And nothing against this guy. Seems like a very nice person that wants to help his family and community, but that is not how you build a solar power system. And just please just read and watch the videos and figure out on your own. You can't just make stuff up and then solder it and like not know why it's galling. Like everything about that video just hurt to watch. Anyways, that's it for this video. I could rant for literally ever. Um, I hope you liked it. I hope it helps you. I hope it educates you. I hope you found some stuff in there that was useful and I will see you in the next video. Bye.